Hey everybody, we're beginning our week four of our weight loss Bible study using the materials that Barb Raveling has made available to us at barbraveling.com. This week we will be studying day seven of her study, which is called Failure Eating, and the link for that is below this video. And day eight, also the link is below this video, and that is Holiday and Vacation Eating which it seems like it's perfect timing for that. Barb shares, um, as she begins day seven, failure eating, she shares a story about how she had this tendency to beat herself up whenever she failed. And she brings to mind this truth that we probably need to bring to mind our minds as well. And that is condemnation is not from God. As you're going through this study, as you're going through your daily life, if you're experiencing condemnation, either from others or from yourself, it is not, God is not the one who's the author of that. Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It also says in John chapter 3, that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Condemnation is not from God, and we can't hate ourselves into positive change. We just can't do it. When you struggle with linking together enough days of obedience or living according to your boundaries, when that is a struggle for you, it is so easy to throw in the towel and just go for it and eat a whole bunch. We want to be uh, proactive, not allow that to happen. <laughs> uh, it's not uncommon for us to be tempted to do that. If you haven't yet listened to it, go back to the audio on appearance eating that I shared on Saturday. And I hope that encourages you that we don't want to let appearance and how we feel about what we look like or the number on the scale determine whether or not we're going to continue this process. God is at work doing a deep work in us, changing the way we think, changing the way we orient our lives, and our character is actually being changed. It will just be a matter of time before those inward changes are seen outwardly. So to engage in more eating because we think we have failed is counterproductive to the deeper work that God wants to do in us. And obviously it's also counterproductive to that exterior work that we hope God is doing as well. So anyway, be on the lookout for even little thoughts of self-condemnation. You want to take those thoughts captive and reject them and renew your mind. Perhaps that's the best thing to do in moments like that is to ask God, that thought isn't from you, God, but what is a thought that is from you that I can replace that bad thought, that evil thought, that negative thought, that lying thought with? Remember Philippians 4, 8, whatever is good and excellent, and noble, praiseworthy. Um, those are the things that we want to think on and believe. So self-condemnation doesn't qualify. So reject that. Take that thought captive. I hope that the Bible study will encourage you. She actually, um, this week is a little different, which is kind of neat because it's a holiday week for some of us. So when you get to the Bible study for day seven, you'll see that there's a link to a study called Is Failure Inevitable? And do that study as Barb challenges us to with your eating failures in mind. And then there's also a trials Bible study. I suggest you to do that as well. Um, and talk with us about it here on the blog. I'd love to hear you. She also includes an encouraging post on patience because so often we are in a hurry. We want to see the results we want to see now instead of being willing to persevere through the challenging times. Remember, we want to learn to do the struggle well, and that's a, for the long haul. Um, one of the questions that Barb asks us in day seven, I think we could spend a long time with the Lord on this one, and I love it because it's so direct. Are you one of those rare people? Okay, so you think you're a failure. Are you one of those rare people who can follow your boundaries effortlessly and perfectly without ever breaking them? I mean, really, when I ask myself that question, it's like, hello, of course not. Of course there's going to be missteps. There's going to be stops and starts. There's going to be four steps forward, two steps back, three steps forward, two steps back. 
the direction that we're heading is positive though. It is no matter what we might think. So uh, that question is very pertinent. And she also asks us, if not, if you aren't somebody who can follow your boundaries effortlessly and perfectly without ever breaking them, what is the sad truth you're going to need to accept? It's that I'm not perfect, that I will make mistakes, that I will have times of failure, times when I don't live according to my boundaries. Will I let those moments define me or will I let all the other moments be the ones that I focus on and praise God for. Okay, so use your um, time with the failure questions and your journal to invite God to just move and show you what is your attitude towards a misstep or um, not living according to your boundary for even one meal. Um, or do you write the whole day off? Um, I want to encourage you that might be a leftover of a dieting mentality history. So be careful about that. The dieting mentality sneaks into our lives in a lot of ways, and that might be one of them. So be on the lookout for that. Day eight is, I, I hope you think of this as a lot of fun. Holiday and vacation eating. A holiday is upon us. We are in a holiday week. Many of us have family visiting or we're visiting other people or we have activities. The kids are home from school. Uh, all kinds of things go on. Our our typical routine may be disrupted, and that alone can cause us to be off kilter with our eating. Well, with all these people around, I couldn't possibly wait until I'm hungry to eat. But we can. We can learn um, and grow in learning how to plan our eating, plan our meals. We can also teach our kids about thinking, being thoughtful of other people so that we can um, be flexible when it's time to be flexible. And if I need to, if my family's coming home and visiting, I might want to plan a time that I'm going to have a meal ready. And, and maybe we can all agree that, okay, one meal a day is going to be at this time. And then I'll plan my hunger for that time. And Everybody will land together at the table. I don't have to be a victim of chaos. Um, in fact, it can be a wonderful thing to offer a little bit of structure to this time. So um, Barb, in, right off the bat, she encourages us to be aware that with a change in our schedule, with people all around us focusing on food, so often that's what happens at holiday times, right? Um, that will possibly cause us to um, have some temptations we ha haven't been accustomed to. Be expecting that. Um, we know that a lot of people like to celebrate with food. So not only will they be diving in and eating a whole lot, there will be all kinds of foods available perhaps that aren't normally available. And our routine will be disrupted. So we've got at least three things going on that perhaps aren't normally going on. If you prepare for those, you will be on your guard and not as likely to give in to um, eating outside of your boundaries. You, um, and, and continue to guard your secondary boundaries because what I've found is when I guard my secondary boundaries, like sitting down while I eat, I am not as likely to eat outside of zero to five. Um, it's when I'm eating on the run or going through the drive through and not um, adhering to my secondary boundaries that I'm more likely to break the primary one, which is the point of secondary boundaries. Barb gives us some suggestions and some strategies in her Bible study this week, and I don't want to preempt those, so look for those as you continue. Um, as you go into this week, there, there aren't any Bible study questions for holiday or vacation eating, and that is partly because one of the things that we take with us into holidays or vacations is um, justification or entitlement. Attitudes of entitlement or justification. And so if that tends to be you, then go back to those questions and those Bible study questions and see if they don't help you to process what you're dealing with this week. And the journal questions, too. So I think you're going to be well-armed for this week. Try to uh, get the study done um, earlier in the week so that then you can be on the lookout for these things and be proactive. Renewing your mind. Continue your renewing of the mind goal. Or you might even want to adjust it this week because you know that you're going to be a little out of kilter with a different um, time frame, maybe a little more chaos than us usual, especially if you're a structured person. Um, so be proactive, plan ahead, get your Bible study done early in the week so that you can uh, enjoy the rest of the week and enjoy a beautiful resurrection holiday. I love this holiday. It's like, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, grave, is your sting? 
and Christ has blown the lid off the grave, and that same power that was used to raise Christ up out of the grave, he has made available to us, we're told in Ephesians. That same power is available to you and me. You were not given a spirit of timidity or of fear, but of love, power, and self-discipline. That Holy Spirit that is in you is the same spirit that was at work in Christ Jesus and is even now in communion with our Lord. We celebrate a wonderful, wonderful experience, and that is that Christ defeated death. And he can speak worlds into existence, and he can defeat death. So we know that he can speak into our lives uh, a wonderful experience this week and on into the weeks to come. Let's renew our commitments. He can also render a death blow to anything that might be defeating us. If he can defeat death, he can defeat anything in our lives that we think hinders us. So keep that in mind this week, that you may be struggling to keep on, but do keep on. That's what this is about. It's about learning to do the struggle well. So keep at it. Keep at it and lean on him. Scriptures say that he has given us everything we need for life and godliness. So let us look to him. It also tells us, and we I've quoted this verse to you guys a number of times, that in my weakness... God's power is made all the more evident, so I will delight all the more in difficulties, in insults, in weaknesses, in persecutions, because I know that when I'm weak, he's strong. When you are weak, my sister, my brother, that is when Christ is most evident in your life. So delight in that place, okay? Let's come out the other side of this week, having experienced the victory that is ours in Christ, okay? Let's do it.